And of course, like always, welcome back to Sin TV Now, where I bring you smart, intelligent news, as well as the multicultural perspective in regards to pop culture. And you know who I am. I am Quita, aka Belasian Quita. So for today's episode, I am bringing you a segment that I just started called Tough Issues, where I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to be straightforward and I am going to say it like it is. And you know why? Because it needs to be said. And especially with what's going on in society as of late, that is totally not acceptable. I decided that, you know what? This is a very serious issue. This is an issue that I feel it's being talked about. But at the same time, it's not being explained properly sometimes. So this is what ended up happening. I found this story and it is coming from the Institute for Women's Policy or Institute for Women's Policy Research. And pretty much what they do is they pretty much do research and they conduct all these different types of studies and bring forth a very unique communication in regards to having a public dialogue about what is going on and the things that overall affect all different types of women. So this is a, a story of a very, it's a really interesting analysis of what has been going on and what has been happening recently in regards to millennials of color, okay? Now, let me make sure that I am clear here. I am not doing this story to try to make this a people of color versus white people issue because at the end of the day, I am going to stand for anybody who appreciates multiculturalism and I really don't care what race you are and what you choose to be at the end of the day. That's up to you, okay? So this story, what ended up happening is that, okay, so this new analysis of, and I'm this is coming from the article directly here, a new analysis of national unemployment rates by the Institute for Women's Policy Research finds that many young women particularly women ages 25 to 34, are experiencing unemployment rates higher than in 2007. The year 2017 marks a decade since the start of the Great Recession, which ran from December of 2007 to June of 2009. The analysis, which looks at young women of different age brackets by race and ethnicity, also finds that across each age group, young black women unemployment rates were higher in, 2000, in 2016 than white women's unemployment rates were at their peak in 2010. For instance, in 2016, black women aged 25 to 34 experienced an unemployment rate of 8.8%, which was higher than the peak rate experienced by white women of the same age in 2010, which was 7.7%. For younger women, the, dispar the disparity is even wider. And I thought this was very interesting. This is a quote coming from um, IWPR senior research scientist, Sandra Childers. And this is what she says. While the overall unemployment rate for American workers is lower than it was prior to the Great Recession, millennial women, especially millennial women of color, have still not fully recovered from the recession. These women who were just entering the workforce or early in their careers when the recession hit, <clears throat> excuse me, and the uh, assuring high unemployment pause the development of their skills and work experience. Now I want to clarify something because this is something that affects me as a very intelligent, well put together woman of color. Okay. So a lot of times when, like what she says here, the pause of the development of their skills and work experience. 
Now, for some people, they see this to be us pulling the race card and us making excuses. And when it comes to the development, like workforce development and education, that relationship goes hand in hand. There are a lot of people of color, and this is even coming outside of the African and African-American communities where they're not getting the education because their environment sucks. And sometimes the environment that you're in is not your fault and you have to deal with what you're dealt with. Now, coinciding this, now, to be, to be fair, we cannot also allow our environment or certain situations to be the downfall for our success. And this is where sometimes women of color have a problem is because sometimes we are our own worst enemy. I can personally say that I am my worst enemy. You know, I am my own worst enemy because I put myself down um, when I'm going through a difficult situation, or if I feel things are not working, I just shut down. And that shutdown comes from, and I have to be honest, the oppression of seeing other people succeed and then looking at myself and being like, well, wait a minute, I have these same qualifications. Don't I deserve a chance? But because I am a person of color, you don't want to give me that opportunity. And isn't that sad? It's really sad. And I have to be honest with it. It's a two-way street. First off, for us as women of color, we have to really look within inside ourselves and really look at our vulnerabilities and turn those vulnerabilities into strength. And that's where education plays a role in that. Education doesn't mean that you're better than everybody else because I noticed that's a stereotype that happens sometimes in the African and African-American communities. It's either education is seen as something respectable or it's seen as something that's kind of like a jealousy tool. And that should not be what education is for. Education should be something that helps you to think outside of the box and allows you to develop active listening skills and better critical thinking. That's the bottom line, okay, to me. Now, let's backtrack a little bit because I know some of you may not be familiar with the different types of generations that are out there. So I went on Wikipedia to get just a general definition of what the millennial generation is. So the millennial generation is pretty much kind of like, they relate to the Generation X, okay? So Generation X are the parents of the millennial generation. Now, there's not a real clear, distinct date per se on when the millennial generation starts, but mainly it's the 1980s and kind of goes through to the mid 2000s, okay? This generation is known for tech, you know, kind of the being in the middle of technological advancement, but still having the traditional methods that Generation X had to a certain extent. This is why millennials, to be honest, are screwed <laughs> in the workforce because what tends to happen is Generation X are kind of like, well, some of Generation X are some of the people that are the CEOs and are the leaders. And they came from a time of a more traditional learning method that wasn't necessarily fully technological per se. Now with the millennials, a lot of the, their generation is technological and that's the way they tend to learn. That's the way they tend to process things a little bit better. And what tend, what's starting to happen is always, it's been happening for many, many, many years is there's always been this battle between generation X and Generation Y, which is known as the millennial generation because of this advancement. Other issues that like Generation X and Generation Y suffer on is things like interracial relationships, um, liberal versus conservatism. And it's it, those are some of those topics that are kind of causing um, an issue between these generations. Now, what do I think is some of the solutions for women of color to just try to do their best to get out of this kind of recession. First off, we have to continue going to school. The research shows that more than ever, women of color are consistently 
going to school, graduating, and doing very well. And we need to continue doing that. Now, the second thing that we need to do, and I think that's the key to our success, is really understanding social equality. There is nothing wrong being proud of who you are, where you come from, you know, that's your background. There's nothing wrong hanging out with people that look like you. But in order for society to progress as well, we have to learn how to work with other cultural groups because that helps our culture to spread out even more. Um, I think that sometimes when there's this hostility and there's this division and separation, and I get it because there's a lot of history that is involved when you think about racism, when you think about the civil rights movement and things like that. There's a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of hatred and a lot of that history is things that many of us, unfortunately, some of us had to go through, some of us are still going through because we have to recognize that as well, but we have to get to a point of recognizing that history and what can we do to come up with better ways for us to work together with other cultural groups. And that is very important because I see that in other cultural groups, that's why they are advancing is because they have learned this concept of, okay, you know what? All this stuff happened in the past. We have to recognize it and respect it, you know, and we need to learn what can we do to move forward. We're not going to forget, but what can we do to move forward? And then on top of that, the other problem too is media representation. A lot of the media representation out there of women of color is not positive. It is very, how can I put it, very ratchet. And it's just not a good representation. And because of that, that also causes us to have another problem with division is because there's there's a couple of you know women of color that are setting good examples, but then <laughs> there's the other side where it's it's kind of based on stereotypes. And stereotypes is something that for the African and African American community. And I'm only speaking for myself. I can't speak for the entire community. This is just from the research that I've done and my cultural experience, okay? What I see is that once again, there's that division. And then the other thing we have to do is, and this is just me personally, is that we have to respect each other because a lot of times some of these problems come from us not really taking the time to respect each other and to understand each other's aesthetic. Because I think what tends to happen in the African and African American communities, and these are like the stereotypes that tend to occur, is that they take like one person and then say, oh, well, this is how all of us act like, and that's not true. It's not true at all. So this is why it is important for us to really not only, not only speak out uh, you know, when things happen that make us angry, we should be speaking out regardless. And especially women of color, we should be speaking out regardless, you know, whether it's good or bad or in between. Because if we're not having these dialogues, then there's, then there's no way for us to properly communicate how we feel. And that's the bottom line too. I mean, it's a two-way street. It's like, okay, you're complaining about how you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Well, you need to talk about it. You need to have dialogue and address it and to let people know how you feel. And by doing that, there are gonna be some people who will be moved, who will be touched by that. And that's how that progress starts to happen. But the other thing we have to recognize too is there's just gonna be some people who will not like us for who we are. I deal with this all the time. I know there are a lot of people who don't like me for who I am and that is okay. But I have to move on because if I don't, I'm just holding myself back because I'm thinking about all this, you know, uh, this negativity and, and how the negativity, you know, is, is affecting me. And by doing that, I can't progress. And we, and sometimes, like I said, for women of color, sometimes we are, are our worst enemy because we're not respecting each other sometimes. And then when there are good examples of people of color doing good things, it's not always shown. Now, don't get me wrong. 
things are changing slowly but surely. You know, I feel like African and African American people are finally getting that second chance or third chance or 10th chance that I, I'm sure many of us want. It's starting to happen slowly, but more of us have to talk from an intellectual sense. If we are talking from intellectualism, that is opening up the door. But if we're talking from ignorance and we're talking from stereotypes, and like I said, media representation kind of plays a role in it. I mean, look, we got shows, don't get me wrong. I respect any, you know, anybody who does reality TV, but look at those reality TV shows that have people of color. There are very few that have really good, rep, to me, really good representation of, of people of color. I mean, yes, it's opening up opportunities and it's opening up maybe stories that we may have not seen, but I feel like it's the same regurgitated stuff over and over and over again. So it's not helping the intellectual progress that personally for me, I would like to see. And in, the only way to really change media representation of people of color is that we have to become better examples. And then on top of that, we have to become a better part of that media representation by being a part of it. Okay, so that means, you know, if, if you have those skills, then you contribute and then you talk about it. Like what I do, I'm contributing by letting, by letting people know how I feel about these issues, whether people agree or if they disagree, which is fine. It is okay to disagree and it is okay to have um, constructive criticism, but we have to be respectful to each other. That's something that I've, I've had to work on myself is I've, I, like, I, I sometimes stereotype, I have to be honest. I often, you know, I often sometimes stereotype my own people and that's just because of what I've experienced. But what I've kind of learned now is I have to give my own people a second chance or a third chance because not all of us are the same. And it's important to, um, to recognize that. And for the millennial women, young ladies out here, I don't care what race you are, let us do better. Let us carry ourselves with respect, you know? I am I never used to respect myself. I have to be honest. I thought because of being uh, a bigger woman of color having and and the other thing I have to note here too is we still have a colorism problem. Okay? I don't care if you're light skin or dark skin. It we're all beautiful in our own way. And it is taking me years and I'm still working on this to accept my skin tone for what it is, to love myself for what for who I am. It's just because what I like, what I'm is slowly but surely. Yes, we have Ledezi, and you know we have uh, Kelly Rowland, and we have Lupita Nanango and Viola Davis, and and all of that. I understand that it's great. You know, we have the Williams sisters, and and the list can go on and on. But the mainstream representation that I still see are women who are lighter complected, and it's it's just it's not fair. And because of that, I spent years hating